This is the topic of my discussion about uh, bringing some perhaps awareness in the space of digital uh, transformation, kind of some terminology, and hopefully share with you some ideas that can help you to uh, define a, a, a path uh, and decide to perhaps engage yourself in the future, or at the, at the minimum, every single one of us living in the digital age, we are relying on a lot of different d devices, mobile, internet, and so on, and of course, the element of security, cybersecurity, all of this will affect us one way or the other, even if you are not pursuing any, any work in this space. Uh, so what I have done is organized my topic into a few areas. First, uh, looking at kind of a touching base with the reality check, I'll call it, and then I'm going to start defining why is that there's a lot of push towards data. You perhaps have heard from the medias, from the industry, from uh, corporations. We are moving towards a digital space. Everything is becoming digitized and there's a lot of push around data. And of course, at the same time, using this data to leverage and perform things differently, perhaps better, faster, cheaper, and kind of tie that to something that is called as uh, Industry 4.0, which is again, a set of opportunities for us to, to improve our, our livelihood and in particular deal with issues that we have at our environmental space and, and so on. And then I'm going to lead with some, some thought at the end for you to perhaps even question and answer periods. Um, so, so next, uh, you know, I'm going to look at the perhaps something that you might have seen in the past. Uh, maybe first ask from the audience, has anyone seen this chart in the media? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, I see about, about seven or eight, about 10%. Uh, this comes from the COVID uh, report. As you can see, the map is British Columbia and shows a number of cases. This, this chart is as of uh, last week. Uh, and, uh, you know, kind of summarizes cases, various breakdown of this is turned into graphs, kind of with pics and also some uh, graphs that break down into areas, age groups, how many cases, and so on. Um, what I'm sharing with you is something that is, has touched every single one of us, not just in our community, but also globally. And um, this kind of information that is being presented to us, it may look a bit overwhelming to some people. And of course, it has an intention to communicate. Nevertheless, the amount of data that it gets fed into a system to come up with something like this, just at the level of province, is enormous, let alone globally, as we are with a small segment of the whole globe. So you can imagine this kind of information is being carried out and, and uh, tallied up and then uh, shared globally by literally every city, every major country in the world, and what kind of information we're looking at. I want to take this a little bit further and kind of look into sort of uh, what, what, is, what, what you gain by having this kind of information presented to you. What is the purpose? Are these information useful for taking any action? Or is it even confuses you and it doesn't give you what you need to know? Uh, so, so a summary of that perhaps is this CDC chart that uh, you know relates to uh, why do we need to have the curve uh, flat, and hopefully that kind of tries to convey the message that the whole purpose of this is to make sure we don't exceed the capacity of the healthcare system, and we spread that perhaps number of cases over longer period of time. So, so with this, we are literally saying that the number of cases will be large, will be large, and we are admitting that because we are based on the data, because of the statistical information from different parts of the world, this is projected that this is going to be exceeding the capacity. So therefore, we have to kind of plan some actions around it. So I'm going back to the whole notion of data and information that leads to action and insight, and try to bring it back to the, to the 
today's world that we call a digital world, every single one of us literally are using digital devices almost on a daily basis. I don't know if anybody has been on the SkyTrain or local trans transit system somewhere. You do not miss to see that almost every single individual is spending time on those digital devices. And the whole notion of the internet and uh, communication digitally has been intermixed with our societies. These the societies have never had the chance to understand how this is going to evolve over time. Remember during the COVID, in fact, the schools started to shut down and then there was a communication via Zoom or, or Teams and that became the norm. Very quickly, people adopted to this level of, you know, interaction. And it, it proved that, in fact, it has some value. You could learn remotely, but it's perhaps not as good as in person. And some people prefer, in fact, a hybrid model. So, so these are some of the things that has changed us moving to the future. But one thing is also important is the future is already here. We have all of this at our disposal and somehow we are shocked. How to deal with it? How do we control our screen time? And how do we you know, get to use these devices in an effective way, not just for entertainment, but also for education purposes, for, for you know, and industries use it for various, various reasons, and I'm going to share with you very briefly. Now, it, let's just step back on what is happening, like going even at the first chart that I shared with you from uh, COVID um, a template, this is all relying on data. So what you see at the, at the foundation, we're looking at data. There's a lot of data. And if I wanted to do this at a scale, you wouldn't be able to see the information that relies on that data because the correlation between amount of data and how some of that turns into something that you can call it is no longer the raw data but is actually information, carries meaning, the, the correlation is very, very, very large. The relationship is, is, is very sparse. And the, the hope of this is to have that information turned into something that you can take a decision or turn it into a knowledge that you can take an action on it and hopefully you can take an action that turns into something that is more promising and we call it the wisdom. Now th this pyramid has been established for many years now, they call it this uh, DIKW pyramid. But my point about sharing with this is that there is a lot of data. In fact, nowadays every device that you are using or even not using produces data and consumes data. Now, how is that the data is all of a sudden so valuable? The, the, and, and how is that the, this, this data is becoming so, so much commodity? In fact, some people call it the, is a, is a, is a digital currency. Data is a digital currency. And in fact, there is a digital currency with data as well, you know. So the whole purpose of all of this discussion is around how can we leverage that information and make it to something of value? And that is what I have in there from insight into foresight. And I'm going to share with you some of the ideas that we, we are kind of a lot of organizations and companies and uh, you know, researchers work towards extracting value from, from data. Like the, the field of data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of these are trying to really leverage the capability of sifting through the data and go from having the ability to describe what happened in the past or what is happening to the point of can we go future? So in fact what I have described in here is a step-by-step -step progression of the value that the data can bring in by not only describing what happened in the past, for example, the first two steps can help us to define based on the data, based on information that is based on the values that are collected from COVID cases, what are, what are our options in moving forward? What do we do next? And perhaps if we have that knowledge explored a bit more, we may get to the point we can say, what do we do to steer that towards a direction that we would like to do? And that is called the prescriptive analytics. So, so the whole purpose of this data science field, which is, by the way, one of the most uh, desired fields, apparently uh, graduates of data science programs are hired literally immediately. So if you are looking into this kind of career, future career, it requires a strong math and a statistics, but nevertheless is a very promising field. But 
what I want to share with you is that this hypothetical progression to value, it comes with a, with a cost and complexity. And the complexity is not just statistical complexity. It's a complexity that requires subject matter experts to look at the result of what happened and what is going to happen to predictive states. And that predictive state needs to be verified. And that's really important. And on top of all of that, as you do this, you need to ensure what you're relying upon is, is trustworthy. So gold, you know, old patterns of garbage in, garbage out. You, if you have any piece of information that it leads to a decision, that needs to be traceable and have the ability to see if that information has led to that, to that point or not. So going forward in this space of discussion, moving into like what, is, what has happened in the past 20, 30 years, the, 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 the amount of data that is coming at us is no longer limited to sources that used to be the case. Nowadays, uh, every single device, every single individual that is using a, 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 a digital device is producing information. And that information doesn't have to be imaging uh, information. Could be location information, could be usage information. The, 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 trend, the, the interest that that information shows by clicking on various things. And what has changed is that from the past, we were, a lot of people were consuming data. Now everybody is generating data at the same time. So that's why this, this loop is constantly you know, repeating itself. And guess who is producing most of the data? Well, I blame it on the teens because they spend most of the screen time. But I'm kidding. There's a lot of data is produced by appliances, devices, and sensors, and so on and so forth. So, um, but it's a, it's a never-ending cycle. And uh, you know, I thought I'd bring a little kind of a pointer towards something that has been happening in the past uh, while, which we call it like a fourth uh, industry, uh, uh, industries 4.0. Uh, it is considered to be a, a level of revolution. Either it is evolution or revolution that's still debatable. Nevertheless, the amount of change with the, within the digital space, the communication industries, the IoT, Internet of Things, the ability to collect data from various sources inexpensively and do something with it that can be on value. It is not unheard of to have the ability to collect uh, sensory data from, like, say, the forests and identify whether or not there is a potential for the fire within a given season. It is possible, in fact, for us to be proactive in tracking what's happening around us at the global level. So, so the whole economy of knowledge is being shaped out of these bits of data. And the opportunities for moving in that space are just endless. At the same time comes with the, with the challenge of dealing with this level of information, having the ability to process this information in a meaningful way. Now, I'm sharing with you a, a little uh, sort of a uh, space regarding the typical usages of this kind of data. I have uh, shared with you some uh, industries, like perhaps some of, the, some of these may, may come naturally. The retail industry has been using data for targeted marketing. Uh, the uh, uh, medical industries have been using it for drug treatments, and uh, even the COVID is one good example of that. And of course, in other industries like defense, you know, cybersecurity, cyber crimes, all that is being used in manufacturing, uh, defect tracking, producing products, cheaper, faster, better. It's, it's really has revolutionized the way the manufacturing industry has been, has been working. So, so this industry 4.0, that is a collection of all this telecommunication, digital advancement, it has been giving us opportunities to evolve in different sectors. And of course, don't forget the entertainment nowadays. Uh, if 20 years ago you, could, you would have told me, that, you know, you could pause a TV, live TV, I would say, are you kidding? Pause a live TV? And, and, you know, that's just, you know, it's been happening for quite some time. And that, that's really where this is going with the industries. That's, that's, that's enormous. And the opportunities are really endless. And, and finally, I thought I'd bring this into some level of uh, discussion for what's, 
what's uh, you know uh, next for you? What is that you you can hope for or you need to know? And and uh, does it worry you that there's a lot of data about you? Um, I, I don't know how many people in this group have uh, Instagram accounts or Twitter. I, I, I believe there's a lot of users for this. I'm one of those that I don't have one. However, when I did a search, someone has the exact name as me, and that person has a, a large profile of various things and even some political ideas that has nothing to do with me. But again, that's there. And I have no control over, over that. So, so all these digital footprints that are around us, we sometimes may have to take actions on it. We have to be aware of what are the opportunities and what are the challenges, cybercrime, uh, cyberbullying, uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on. But going back to all ideas, the future, the future is really here already. And the versatility of the tools uh, the, the knowledge, the information, the, the opportunities for learning, it's enormous. And it really comes down to what you like to do with it. I kind of summarize it at the very top. You know, try and you fail, try again, hopefully fail, and finally you succeed. Well, this is how the hackers work, by the way. The hackers try and try and try and try, unless they get in. They call it brute force technique when the hackers try to break into a system. Now, this is not what I'm suggesting, though. Uh, you can do better. You can definitely do better. And in order to do that, you really need three things. And hopefully from this summary, you can kind of see what those three things are. The, the first one, I believe, is a mindset. The, the, the thinking, the, the, the vision. What do you think that you would like to do? What is that you, you, know, you think it makes a difference? Even without thinking about how to achieve it, just think about it. And with that thinking, visualize a vision. You know, I think a vision is really, really key for that success. It doesn't matter how many steps you take to that vision, but you have to have that vision somewhere because even vision without action is still maybe daydreaming. But if you act without a vision, it can be a nightmare. So vision is really critical, and this is not at the personal level, but also at the, at the strategic level for corporations and the industries and so on and so forth. So it's really important to, to have a mindset and have that vision, even if it is drawn on a piece of paper. The other piece that I really recommend is that looking into what I have been seeing in the past two decades or so, the influx of data, information, all of that, it keeps coming at you. The world is getting more complex. The challenges are increasing. And for us to have the ability to move towards something of, something of value, we need to have a strategy. We need to have an approach that is allowing us to plan it and stage it. So, so the second thing that I'm suggesting, you know, think about is a, a phased approach. Phased approach in whatever you want to achieve towards that. And, and with that, the, the learning will happen along the way. So you're going to have to have the learning happen along the way so that you can kind of measure the steps that you're taking towards the, towards the end goal. And uh, the, the important part is, is not to fail. You know, Edison, I think he failed like, a, I don't know how many times, nine, nine times before the light bulb actually worked. But the point is not to give up and make sure that you just take this step in the right direction. And uh, with that, uh, uh, again, thank you for your uh, attention to this and um, appreciate your, your participation in this. Thank you.